Welcome back. If you have questions to ask about hemophilia, you can call us on 0805-468-3514. That's 0805-468-3514. And you can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. And if your tweet's coming in time, they might be read on the program. So let's continue. Tell us what are your challenges right now, if any. <coughs> My, my challenges right now, um, my challenges right now, I want to talk about um, myself and the Hemophilia Foundation of Nigeria. Our challenges right now is, like I said earlier, is the awareness issue. Um, April 17 will be set aside to celebrate the World Federation of, to, to celebrate the World Hemophilia Day. Um, is a, a day that is set aside to show the world that we exist and to tell the world to, to, to tell the world to support our plight and also um, our challenge right now is the low um, treatment um, the low treatments that we have for hemophilia and uh, not we, enough attention yes not enough attention so we need the attention of the government we need the attention of the world meaningful Nigerians to support our plight so um, April 17 has been set aside to celebrate and to tell the world to join us um, in our plight too. Okay, so uh, doctor, what if somebody had hemophilia and didn't attend to it? Could complications arise? Yes. Um, especially even from, if unattended to um, prolonged bleeding, of course, could lead to um, the utmost as in yeah. death and all that. But um, prolonged um, bleeding, recurrent bleeds, especially in the joints, um, we, we call that um, hematrosis. And once it becomes um, prolonged and all that, it becomes, the, the, the joints are affected and they, they become um, sort of, there are difficulties with movements, there are difficulties with move, uh, going about their daily activities. In fact, we have patients that have a um, long absence from school, from work, based on um, those complications. And of course, um, the sight of the bleeding um, would also be taken as a, a major complication. For instance, uh, patients that bleed into the brain. Okay. They, they could have very um, severe presentations. And, um, but can you, can you manage those bleeds into the brain? Yes, they can be managed if they're picked up on time. So the teaching and the admonition to patients with hemophilia is, if you have a headache, come to the hospital. Don't say, is it malaria? Is it this? Is it that? Just we go straight need, to the need, hospital. We need to find out what Let's is going on. Let's take this call coming in. Hello. 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 What's your Hello. question? Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. You're welcome. Hello. 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 We can hear you. Okay. The situation of having blood in the urine, is it the same thing as hemophilia? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll answer that. He's talking about the appearance of blood in the urine. Could that be hemophilia? There are many causes of um, hematuria, which is what he described, but it's also a presentation that occurs not so commonly, but it occurs in hemophilia. So if somebody should see blood in the urine, is it something, because I know a lot of people will just say, oh, okay, I didn't take enough water, so I had a problem, you know, with bowel movement. I'll just let it go and check tomorrow, day after. I should be healed and fine. Is, is that a wise thing to do? No, that's not a wise thing to do, but it, not because it might be hemophilia, it could be any other thing. In fact, there are so many causes of hematuria, um, from the benign to the non-benign infections, malignancies, and all of that. So, but it is a presentation in hemophilia. Okay. So we're talking about complications. It can affect the joints. Yes. It can cause severe problems if it goes into the brain. Yeah. But does it affect organs like the liver, the heart, the lungs, um, kidneys? Not particularly, not particularly. Um, the major complications are where the bleeds might have, might have occurred. For instance, there's something we call the um, pseudotumor, which is um, the collection of blood within a... An, um, within a space, like maybe the abdominal cavity, and um, it, it gets um, recalcified and becomes a major issue. It makes, it makes, it becomes like a tumor of some sort, and that could be um, disabling to okay. the individual. But not particularly the, the organ itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Prosper, I want to ask you, do you, mm -hmm. 
keep maybe a stash of supplies that you need for an emergency? Is that a requirement for you? Yes, please. We actually have an, emerge an emergency pack that we keep, that we use at home in case of any bleed um, into the joint. Like I've been having bleed into my knee, my shoulder. I have a regular... Let me stall you for just a moment and okay. take this call from Kunle. Hello, Kunle. <coughs> Kunle, please turn down the volume of your TV or put it off entirely so that we can hear you. Hello, Kunle. We can. Okay, Kunle's lost to us for now. You were talking about the emergency pack. So we um, usually have an emergency pack that we get from the treatment, uh, health treatment center to keep at home. And the maximum we can, the minimum we can have at home is one pack um, of, um, of a factor eight. Because okay. I use a factor eight, I'm an hemophilia E. I use a factor eight if I have crisis. So, um, and I have a record for my bleed whenever I administer my factors. So, okay, I have uh, Megan say okay. the treatment of hemophilia is expensive. Yes, please. Do you agree? Oh, yes, yes. Please. How yes. expensive are we talking? Very expensive. Uh, one unit of a factor is about $2. Um, for example, I use um, 1,500 IU of factor 8. So multiply that with um, times $2. So that would be running into thousands of naira. Thousands of, of and naira. And yes, just please. For just Let me one. quickly get Hafsat on the line. Hello. You need to turn down the volume of your TV set really low so that we can hear you. Or put it off. Good afternoon. You still need to turn it down. Oh, I've done that. Too. That's much better. So what's your question? Sorry, can you can you turn down the volume a bit more so that we can hear you? We can we are getting a howl back here. Hello, can you hear me? That's much better. Yes, we can. Okay, I said are there any precautions? Okay, precautions. I'm going to have to stop you there. I will guess at the question. She's talking about precautions. So let's talk about precautions so that there is no bleed. Is there something like that? Well, yes, there is. You generally want to prevent injuries. You'd, um, although for um, boys growing up, it could be quite a challenge for the mothers saying, don't go outside and play football. Don't do this, don't do yes, that. Yes, there is but, that. Um, the, the problem is we're limited in this environment. Okay. In other climes, where maybe the patient is on um, prophylaxis, that is, he's getting regular doses to sustain him and keep him, you know, okay. he's able to form clots when necessary. So in those climes... Because of a low dose yes, application in, to of, him. Yes. Oh, that's good. So in those climes, it's, it's easy for them to play sports. It's easy for them to... Um, do whatever they want to do. But, but do you advise exercise? Oh, yes, of course. But with supervision, maybe? With supervision and usually maybe under some factor coverage, especially if the patient is on um, prophylactic therapy. Okay, we've got to go now. Thank you so much, Dr. Yomi Olude, for coming Thank to you. the show. Thank you, Prosper Isegei. Okay. It's been wonderful having both of you and wonderful having you at home with us. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.